Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce Theme Development with REST API. In the previous video, we learned about how to go ahead and create the uh, checkout for other payment options. And now we're going to learn about how to go ahead and uh, add a payment method for Stripe. So let's add a couple of items in the cart. So we're going to select the Stripe option and build this the functionality to integrate Stripe. Okay, so I've already written a blog for this, which I will leave a link in the description. It gives you information about how to get the API keys and what are the different packages you need to install. So you can get that information from here. I won't be really going through and explaining how to get the API keys because it's very self-explanatory and uh, you can just follow along with this blog and, and get the API keys. So there are certain packages we need to install. So we need to install these packages first. Um, Stripe, Stripe.js, uh, next Stripe beta, micro, and uh, also we need to install Stripe uh, for the server side level. So these, these are going to be for this client level, this will be the client level, and this will be the server level. Okay, so this is, I'm going to explain to you that in a moment. Let's just install it. And let me take you to these, um, packages and explain to you what they do so let's say stripe stripe beta so you go over here it's basically says that it's a simplified server side stripe workflow in Next.js. okay and it does all the heavy lifting and catching all the routes for stripe and uh, basically uh, you know to create checkout sessions etc so if you want to read more about it you can read it but i'll show you how to, how to actually implement this okay uh, and then you have the um, Stripe itself, so Stripe NPM. So it provides convenient access to the Stripe API from application written in server-side JavaScript. So that's mainly related to the server-side. Then you have Stripe, Stripe JS, which allows you to use the Stripe JS as an ES module. So again, you can read more about these packages, but but uh, we do need them. And maybe we also needed the micro. So micro is basically asynchronous HTTP microservices. It has multiple features, like it allows you to use it with async await, ultra high performance with even JSON passing opt-in. So you can read more about it again over here. So we're gonna use all of these. So following this um, blog, I'm assuming that at this point, you can pause the video if you want, and uh, you can go and get your API keys. Uh, you need to create an account on the Stripe. So you need to go to stripe.com and go ahead and sign in and once you sign in you will see a platform like this uh, where you will click on developers you'll have options of the api key and a secret key and you also need to create a webhook uh, i've already created one this is how it looks like and all the information is there in the blog how to create the api key and create the webhook and, and things like that okay so i'm assuming that at this point you have that uh, you need to go to your environment file uh, I'm going to put that environment example and basically you need to add these here okay so you put the next public stripe publishable key stripe secret key so you'll get all of that information uh, under the API key publishable key and secret key and uh, then you also need the stripe webhook endpoint secret which is when you create this uh, webhook uh, then you'll be able to get that key. So you, you need to put all of those values under these constants in your .env file. Okay, uh, I'm showing you an env example because I can't show you my own secret keys which is there in this file. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. You need to put that in the .env which is here, right? Over here. I have already done that. Okay, so now we need to basically create this file uh, which is going to catch all the routes in your project, uh, pages, API, slash stripe directory so let's do that so i'm going to go to api and then create a file called stripe and inside of this i will create this file okay so this will catch all the routes at that endpoint and i'm going to go ahead and import uh next stripe from next stripe and then export next stripe and then put the stripe key and we already have the stripe secret key which is great okay Next thing we do is basically create the Stripe session. So get the Stripe session. I'm gonna create another file in the root of the API. It'll be called as get stripe session.js. 
I'll paste this code snippet here. Uh, so this basically says stripe requires stripe process dot env uh, stripe secret key, and then we have module dot export async await. Uh, we basically get the session here stripe dot checkout dot session dot retrieve using session ID from the query. Okay, and then we send the response with the session. So this is to get the stripe session. Next thing we need to create the Stripe webhook. Uh, so if you're wondering, you know, why we're we using webhook, uh, well, the reason for this is because uh, once the payment has been complete, uh, we need a mechanism to let WordPress know that the payment has been complete. And then at that point, we should be able to change the order status. Let's say if it's depending, you can change, it'll get changed to complete. Okay. So I'll go ahead and paste this code snippet. It's all available on GitHub, and I'll explain to you in a moment what that does. Stripe webhook.js. I'll paste this code snippet. So here we pull the buffer from the micro. Uh, we get the Stripe uh, from the server side, from the Stripe package. We get the WooCommerce REST API. Uh, then we create a new instance of a Stripe here. We get the webhook secret from our process env, which we have put inside of a .env file. We have the configuration body parser equals false. And this is your WooCommerce API. And the reason why we need this is because we need to update the status of the order to complete once the payment has been made. That's why we are using the WooCommerce REST API also here. Then uh, this will call update order async because um, this webhook will be accessed. This, this will be... Um, requested once the order is complete. So whatever happens here uh, happens after the order has been uh, complete. So we create the new order status equals new status uh, and then transaction ID is equals that. So we set all of that, that data for the new order. And then there is an API available in WooCommerce called uh, orders and we can update the order using put method. And you pass the new order data. So this basically is going to update the order data. Okay. We have another handler here, which is basically is going to check if it's a post request, and then it's going to create a buffer, set the request headers to Stripe signature, get the signature from there. So basically get the signature uh, from the request headers, then initialize the Stripe event. So there's going to be an event and that will be called uh, checkout.session.completed. So it's going to listen to that event. Okay, so once that event gets fired, this will get invoked. Okay, so say stripe webhooks dot construct event, and then if there's any error, you hold that, and you can see that it's listening to this event, right? So once this event is fired, when you create this webhook endpoint, you need to add this event here. So it's going to listen to that event, and when that uh, event gets fired, which means payment is completed. Uh, checkout session is completed and that point it's going to go ahead and call this update order which is which is the function that we've just created and uh, it'll set the state uh, of the order depending on whether it's processing or uh, if it's failed and all of those things okay so so basically it'll call that function and it'll eventually call the rest api uh, which is the put request and update the order status so that's what's happening here inside of this stripe webhook okay okay so once we build this, I'll close these guys. Now over here, where we are checking inside of the checkout form.js, inside of the function called handle form submit, where we are checking if the input payment method is Stripe, which means that the user has selected the Stripe as a payment mode on the ch on the uh, checkout page, then go ahead and call this function, which will be handle Stripe checkout, and we're going to pass the input, the cart items, request error function set card set it is order processing set create order data all of these functions right and let's go ahead and create this function so we're going to create this function inside of the checkout index.js uh, so let's do that uh, this was handle other payments now we're going to do the stripe one so i'm going to paste this code snippet here so this is the function handle stripe checkout and i'm going to go ahead and uh, import this so click on insert import It'll import that on th at the top of the file okay uh, so now what's happening here see handle stripe checkout so there are four steps first create the formatted order uh, order data because stripe would expect you to send the data and line items in a specific format so we need to get the formatted data create order using nextjs create order endpoint 
so remember that we had already created this create order endpoint here and this basically goes ahead and uses the WooCommerce REST API, which is this. And he uh, makes a post request to create the order and get the data as a response once the order is created, which is success, order ID, currency, payment URL, etc. Then we clear the card session and on success, we set the Stripe uh, form to show true. Okay, so moving on. So we first set the is processing to, so to true so that when the user clicks on this place order, we show some processing uh, text here to let the user know that and we disable the place order uh, button. And then we call this function. I already explained this function to you in the previous episodes that this basically uh, uses our card item products and constructs the data in the shape that's required. Uh, and then uh, we call the create order function, which is basically going to call that AP, uh, create order API that I just shown you, which is this one and uh, create the order and basically create the order at WordPress end and set the status to pending state uh, for the time being and get the order ID. Then we clear the cart because once the order is created, we want to clear the cart. We don't want to keep anything in the cart. Uh, so this bag will get empty. Then we set this processing to false. So the loading text that was showing that would be showing over here will get uh, stop being visible uh, and then yeah in case if we don't have the order id or if there's any error in clearing the card we just show that error and return null and don't proceed but if that's not so then we pass the customer order data which we have received into set created order data function which we are actually uh, you know passing here and uh, finally we call the create checkout session and redirect so we create a session for the stripe and we redirect the user to the uh, Stripe uh, payment gateway platform where the user can enter the card information. So let's create this function. So I'm going to paste the code snippet over here and then I'll explain to you. So in this function, we need to create the checkout session and redirect. Uh, so we create the, init we initialize the session data, success URL, cancel URL, customer email, line items, metadata, payment method type, mode of payment, all of these things. Success URL, you want to redirect the user to the thank you page once the order is successful. Uh, in case if it's not successful, you want to just send the user to a specific page, we'll, which we'll probably deal with later. And this will have the customer email. Uh, this will have the line item. So you need to create a function to get the line item. But before that, we should create the thank you page. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the pages and in the pages I'm going to create a file called thank you and paste this code snippet here we need a loading icon also so let's get the loading icon uh, so we'll deal with the thank you page later uh, but let's just keep moving on okay I uh, don't want to break the flow here so we have a cancel URL customer email we also need the function for line items so let's do that so we'll create a function over here called line items and the job of this is basically to get the um, data in the format that's required, which is quantity, name, images, amount, and currency, uh, that's a requirement for the um, Stripe. Remember we had a requirement for uh, the REST API where the line items had to be in a specific shape, but here the line items need to be in a different shape. We need quantity, name, images, amount, and currency. Okay. Of course, you need to change this uh, currency to make it dynamic, but you can do that later yourself. So that's your line items. Uh, and then we need the metadata also. So let's create a function for that. So just below the line items, we'll create another function called get metadata. Again, the job of this is to get the billing and the shipping and uh, in the JSON format. So metadata has to be in JSON format and the order ID as well, okay? Uh, you can add the customer ID also, but we'll deal with that later. Then uh, the next thing we do is basically once we have the created the session data, we need to create the checkout session. Uh, so for that, we'll have to call, we'll have to create a function called create checkout session. So let's do that. So for that, we have to call the create checkout uh, session function. And this function is already available inside of uh, uh, the next Stripe client, the package that we downloaded, right? Uh, so we'll just use that function and that function expects us to pass the session data inside of it. So that's what's going to happen here. Uh, and then we'll catch if there's any error. Once we have uh, created the session, then we load the Stripe. So again, this function 
is available in the package called this function is available in the package called stripe stripe js which we already downloaded if you remember we had downloaded this package right so we'll call that function and uh, we'll pass the uh, stripe publishable key uh, and then this will give us access to stripe and then we'll call the function re redirect to checkout so redirect to checkout is already available inside of the stripe so we don't have to really create that it's uh, already available in the stripe that we receive here okay we need to pass a session id uh, session dot id and catch if there are any errors okay so uh, that's it for this video in the next video we'll continue uh, with the stripe functionality and we'll also create a thank you page all right so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already uh, do give me the super thanks by clicking on the thanks button uh, below this video to support my work Follow me on uh, Twitter. My Twitter handle is Coditech and follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Etsayar. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.